A warm welcome to this talk. I was just looking at this for my own interest, really, but um, I'd put a, together a few notes on it, so I decided to share it anyway. And it's uh, information from Denmark. Now, the Danes seem to think that we might be using the wrong injection technique for giving the vaccines. Now, um, incorrect injection technique is what they are suggesting here. Vaccine technique can be a rare cause of blood clots. Now, um, I put together quite a few references for this. Uh, I had a bit of help from someone in Denmark. Uh, so there's uh, intramuscular injection in uh, children and adults. And uh, it's saying there usually one does not need to usually aspirate before a vaccine, which is kind of what we've done. But then these other sites are saying that we, we should uh, aspirate before uh, before giving vaccine. Now, let, let me show you what I mean by this. So um, what we do with the students is we tend to teach them how to do intramuscular injections with an orange. So I'm going to try and um, try and demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So we'll probably zoom out a bit for this, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So here we have a orange that that represents a muscle. And here we have a here, here we have a syringe and a, a needle. This don't worry. This is quite a lot large, <laughs> a lot larger than the ones you, you were giving uh, vaccines with. But so to give an intramuscular injection, basically you go in at ninety degrees like that. So you're in, and then what we always teach to do, and I've been doing this for well, forty odd years now, is we we draw suck back a little bit like that to aspirate. Now this orange had a little bit of air in it, so uh, a bit of air's come in. That d doesn't normally happen when you're in a muscle. And now, once we've aspirated, we know we're not in a blood vessel because no blood's come out. Then we're free to uh, we're free to give the uh, to give the injection. So that's what we normally do. Now, if you are in a blood vessel, so if you if you if you stick that in there, and inadvertently you find you've just gone into a blood vessel. Then when you aspirate, what happens is, you know, if just imagine that's the blood vessel there. If you look at the syringe, what happens is when you aspirate, of course, you get you get the blood in. You know you're in a blood vessel and you need to uh, you need to reposition. So that's what we mean by as aspiration. So when I when I give intramuscular injections, of course, I always I always aspirate to make sure I'm not in a blood vessel. But with vaccination, the recent teaching is that you don't need to aspirate. So that seems to be the way it's being done. But now the, uh, the Danish are saying, well, no, you, you do. You should be aspirating. Uh, as, as we see from that particular site there, COVID-19 should be given with aspiration before injecting. So interesting. Let's just have a look at the, the, the background here. Um, so the, 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 I think the, this now this is in Google Translate, so it's always a bit difficult. But this seems to be the State Serum Institute of Denmark now recommends injecting uh, injection aspiration before injecting the vaccine. So you stick the needle in, you draw back before you inject it, which isn't current uh, protocol. Uh, th this is a change in the recommendations, according to the Danish authorities. And it's based on what they call a precautionary principle. Uh, now, normally the dental, deltoid muscle does not have major blood vessels. But of course, anatomy is one of these things that's a bit different in everyone, as you probably know. That's why, that's we all, why we all look a bit different, because, um, you know, there can be anatomical variations. So what the Danes seem to be saying here was, well, a few people might have a, a significant blood vessel in, in their deltoid muscle. So when the, the, the injection goes in, um, it, go, it could potentially just by chance, in a small minority, not a very small minority of people, going a blood vessel. And we'd end up giving an intravascular injection or an intravenous injection probably, rather than an intramuscular injection that we want to give. So this is what they're concerned about. Uh, they're saying aspiration prolongs uh, injection time, so it'd be more painful. Well, um, as I say, I've given intramuscular injections for a long time now. And, uh, you know, I, you, you kind of stick, you know, like I've just demonstrated, you stick the needle in. You aspirate and you can do that while keeping everything really still. So I don't think that's a particularly strong argument, really. But the Danes are saying, direct quote, there is a suspicion as to whether accidental injection of the vaccine into a blood vessel could play a role in side effects is what they're talking about. Now, they go on to say there's no data or knowledge to support this, but they've gone on to change their policies. 
Uh, new recommendations apply only to COVID vaccine, not to other vaccines. So is this something about COVID vaccines that means it needs to be done differently? Interesting. Could this be a possibility uh, of increasing side effects in, in the one in many thousands of cases, perhaps, where the injection is inadvertently given into a blood vessel? Let's go on. Uh, intravascular administration may lead to systemic inflammatory reaction leading to blood clots is what they're saying. They're not saying this happens. This is what they're postulating. Uh, therefore, they're advising aspiration to make sure the injection is not given intravascularly as a precaution. Um, and again, lo lots of sites. I've given you I've given you lots of references here. here here's one here. Um, Changes recommendations on vaccine technique after reports of dangerous side effects. So anyway, let's go on with the, with the thing I've put together. Uh, COVID-19 vaccines should be given with aspiration before injection, according to this Danish site. Now, this is the Danish Nursing Council saying this. Aspiration is recommended for all approved COVID-19 vaccines. So they're not picking out any particular vaccine here. They're saying this should be done for all of the vaccines given under the auspices of the Danish authorities. Consistent with the Danish Health and Medicines Agency guidelines. So here we've got the Danish Nursing Council and the Danish Health and Medicines Authority recommending this same thing that we should be aspirating before we actually squirt in the, the vaccine. Vaccination personnel should ensure they are injecting correctly into a muscle and not into the bloodstream. Makes sense to me, I must say, that's why I'm doing this. Possible connection between the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and rare but serious side effects with blood clots and bleeding is what they're postulating as, as a possibility. Uh, and the link to updated instructions from the Danish Serum Institute. Now, again, I'm not that familiar with the Danish authorities, obviously, but this seems to be the Danish Vaccination Authority. So we seem to have the Danish Vaccination Authority, the Danish um, Health and Medicines Agency and the Danish Nursing Council all singing off the same hymn sheet here, saying that uh, aspiration is advised before uh, putting the vaccine into the muscle. Um, again, so or, click on all these links. I mean, th th these, these are largely through Google Translate, but I think I, I think I am getting the gist of it. Uh, Danish doctors uh, complain about the way the vaccinations are being given which he thinks is incorrect because aspiration is not being done so that was that one there I think so um, quite a bit of uh, authoritative voices in Denmark uh, coming out with this when vaccinating it's important to make sure the vaccine does not go directly into the bloodstream direct quote the plunger should be pulled back slightly if blood comes find a new place is is uh that's my paraphrase of, of what they're saying. Now, um, these are the, the UK guidelines that I just checked on today. Now, the UK guidelines are from what we call the uh, the Green Book. And uh, this is here. It's available online. Obviously, it used to be green uh, <laughs> in the old days. I think the relevant chapter is chapter four, immunisation procedures. Um are we going to change to that? Yeah, there we go, immunisation procedures. Then you can click on there and you can get the whole thing. This is public domain and anyone can get this. It's all it's all there for anyone who wants to, to read it. So what, what's it's what I've picked out here. Uh, now, the Green Book here is saying, direct quote, vaccine should not be given intravenously. Then it also says, and this is the bit that doesn't quite make sense to me. So that's a direct quote from the Green Book, chapter four. It also says, and again, the direct quote from the Green Book, chapter four, it is not necessary to aspirate the syringe after the needle is introduced into the muscle, talking about vaccinations. Now, we give a wide variety of intramuscular injections in healthcare. Now, we used to give a lot more. These days, a lot more things like in antibiotics are given intravenously. I mean, in the old days, I used to give a lot of intramuscular antibiotics, very unpleasant and painful for the pain patient. Thankfully, this is now much less, much less painful. Um, but we still go other things uh, intramuscularly. And when, when you put it in, you always aspirate to make sure you're not in a vessel because the instructions say give it intramuscularly, not give it intravenously. Um, 
Now, it's very rare that blood does come out, but if it, it, do, it does, you can recite it because we have to give the right dose of the right drug via the right route, via the right route. Right dose of the right drug via the right route to the right patient at the right time. Um, so, is there a slight contradiction there? Prima facie would tell me there is. They're saying it's not necess necessary to aspirate, yet they're saying that the vaccine should not be given intravenously. Now, the rationale there probably is there's very few large vessels in the deltoid in most people, but as we said, people are different. And they give a couple of references for that. This one here just seems to be a textbook. Uh, this one is from the World Health Organization. And I did check that reference out as well, which is here. Uh, this seems to be the latest version of that. And there's a great amount of detail here in this book from the World Health Organization or this instruction book from the World Health Organization. Um, now, I looked through that guideline. I spent about an hour looking through and I couldn't find anywhere it said uh, you don't need to aspirate. So whereas the Green Book actually states you don't need to aspirate, um, the World Health Organization guidelines didn't say you don't need to aspirate. But there again, they didn't say you do aspirate either. In fact, they just seem to completely ignore it. So, so basically, they said you, you, you put the needle in, then you, then you give the injection. No mention of aspiration. So there you go. I thought that was interesting. Um, the Danish authorities are now advocating aspiration prior to injection. Um, the guidelines, as I understand them in the UK from the Green Book there, don't. The Danish suspect that could be a cause of side effects um, in the UK. No one seems to have commented on it up until now. So um, thanks to my Danish correspondent who sent that in. Interesting. I am trying to contact some authorities about it now to ask this question, uh, but it is quite, quite difficult to do. Uh, trying to get through to people is quite tricky. Now, let's close with a video from uh, Will in uh, China. My wife and 31-year-old daughter got vaccinated today here in Changsha, China. As you see, there is no social distancing and limited mask wearing. That's because we haven't had a new case of the virus since April last year. From what you've said, they're injecting a little bit low for the deltoid muscle. My wife and 31-year-old daughter got vaccinated. Wasn't on, let me start that again. Uh, 300 kilometres to the south of Wuhan. Uh, mass vaccination started on the 14th of March. Now, all healthy Chinese people between the ages of 18 and 59 are being vaccinated. Interesting they've gone for this strategy rather than going for the more at-risk uh, older age group. But it does make sense, of course, because they don't have, basically, there's no endemic disease in China at the moment. So it does make sense to vaccinate the people that would potentially spread another outbreak uh, first to, to prevent another outbreak from occurring. So it does make sense. Uh, now starting to vaccinate older people in Beijing as well. Um, it will eventually go to that group here, perhaps in two or three months' time. So it's being rolled out across the country. Last new infection in this city in uh, Chang... I, I really can't pronounce it. Ch Ch Changski. Sorry about that. <laughs> and anyway, so it's a city 300 kilometres south of Wuhan. Last new infection in the city was April 2020. Now, this is, there's been question marks over the information from China, but I've got this directly from this guy in China. This is true. There's been no infections there since April 2020. So um, having not done too well at the start of the pandemic, the Chinese did brilliantly after that and basically eradicated the virus more or less from their country, or essentially eradicated it. Things are pretty much back to normal here and have been since spring last year. Well, let's just say where I live, it hasn't been back to normal. From the video and length of the queue, the jabs are obviously popular, Will says, which is true. They've already conducted over 75 million vaccinations, so you'd think uh, they would uh, have shown up if there was any safety concerns. 
and there are 61 vaccination sites in the city of 8 million people. So glad to see that rollout is going there with the Chinese vaccines and the Chinese vaccination programme, which I'm sure have been very thoroughly tested in China. Frustrating from our point of view as outsiders because we simply don't have the... Uh, the peer-reviewed data on Chinese vaccines, unfortunately. I really hope that came. It was late in coming with the Sputnik vaccine for the, from the Russian authorities. Let's hope the Chinese do that. But they're obviously uh, confident enough to roll it out so far to 75 million of their citizens, and they wouldn't do that, I'm sure, if there was a, a, any significant question marks. So good to get that update. Thank you for that. And um, I will certainly get back to you if I hear back from the UK authorities on the issue of aspiration prior to uh, injection. Interesting. I mean, these, okay, it's very rare that it will go into a blood vessel, massively rare, but then again, these side effects are massively rare as well. And in Denmark, they're seeing this as a necessary precaution. Not making any uh, advice here for, for the rest of the world, but it's an interesting question. Thank you for watching.